Morning, Tracy. Morning, Dano. Hey, Hart. Morning. David, do you know if we're going to have rye today? Uh, I don't actually. I can uh, check in with them. Okay. Can you guys see the um, antitrust policy? Yes. Yep. Okay, great. I'm showing the right screen. Loving it. <laughs> so Tracy, I ping Rai. I haven't heard back yet. I mean, I want to respect everybody's time. We can go ahead and get started. I believe the recording's going, so. Yeah, that's fine. Um, David, would you mind uh, updating the attendance of who shows up as we go through? Sure, I can do that. All right, appreciate that.
All right, that's just counting people. I think we have the majority of the folks that we're gonna get today. I did see um, Angelo had sent a regrets and Arno had sent me regrets at least for the first half an hour. Um, we'll see if he can make the second half an hour. Um, so we are missing, I think a few people uh, from the list, but given, given time, let's go ahead and get started. Um, so as you are all aware, uh, everybody on this call has been here before. This call is open to everyone. Uh, there's two things we must um, partake or participate in. Uh, that is the antitrust policy notice uh, that you should be seeing on the screen and hopefully has been displayed long enough for you to uh, completely grok that. Um, the second thing is our Hyperledger code of conduct uh, which is linked in the agenda. So as we start, we've got uh, three separate announcements um, that are here. Uh, the first one is, uh, I think David, you added this one maybe? Yeah, yeah. Just as it says, we wanna thank everybody, not just everybody on the call, but everybody in the community for the contributions they made in 2021. So we put together kind of a small, just thank you gift, a swag pack from the store. So we've, emailed people who we saw had made contributions in, in the year. And so look for your email in that. If you don't see that in your email, check your spam box because uh, um, it might have gone there. But there's a code to use in the store to redeem a free thank you gift. So please feel free to use that. If you don't, if you do check your spam box and don't see it, uh, um, feel free to reach out to us and we can check with the store vendor just to make sure that the email was sent. But again, just we want to thank everybody for contributing. And we thought it could be a nice way to incentivize people to contribute before the end of the year. If people want the swag pack but haven't contributed yet, uh, you can contribute and then we'll send you the gift. We'll do another, we'll check uh, for contributions at the end of the year and send out another round of thank yous to the people who contributed. Uh, um, so that's it. All right, thanks, David. Um, the second one here is, uh, as always, there's the Dev Weekly developer newsletter that goes out uh, each Friday. And so if you have anything that you'd like to include in that, um, please do so at the link that's given there. Um, there's uh, a wiki page that you can update for upcoming newsletters. Uh, the third item here, uh, we did. I did see David's email go out to the different mailing list about canceling meetings the last two weeks of the year. Um, so this is just a notice that we plan to cancel the December 23rd and the December 30th TSC meetings due to the end of year holidays. Um, are there other announcements that anybody has that they'd like to add at this time? All right, I will take silence as I know. Uh, we do have three uh, different quarterly reports that have come in, Hyperledger Grid, Hyperledger Transact, and Hyperledger Cello. Uh, when I checked these, um, I did see that we've got some people who haven't yet um, reviewed them. So please uh, do take the time to, to go through and review them. Uh, at the same time, I didn't see any specific questions um, unless they've just shown up. Uh, so I will assume that uh, we have no questions at this point, but uh, if there are any questions that people do have that they'd like to um, bring up, please, um, please do so now. All right, so uh, we do have quite a few uh, missing reports. Uh, we've got four that are um, missing. The, uh, the upcoming reports that we have, uh, we do have for the rest of the year, four additional reports that we expect to come in. Um, so as they come in, please do take the time to, to review those, ensure that you don't have any questions about what's happening in any of those projects um, as they come in. I know, uh, Dano, I saw, um, well, I see you have your hand up, so I will let you, um, I will let you speak now. 
So first, is the uh, quilts on uh, dormant state so they don't do reports? Yeah, I don't think we ever specified that necessarily when we went through the project life cycle, but I, I would agree with you, uh, Dano. Um, yeah, if, if no one's taking care of it, no one's gonna be there to put a report in. That's right. That's so right. that'll probably need to be updated on a 2022 calendar. Um, also an important thing to note about the dates, these dates are the Monday, not the Thursday. That's so right, because that's they are, they are supposed to be due on Monday. Um, the the week of the um, TSC meeting. So in the uh, project reports, um, it does show that they're uh, the date of the TSC meeting. Um, but at the top, it says something like, uh, you know, these are due the Monday of that week. So I have been specifically calling out the Mondays. Um, so for like this week, uh, we had Explorer and Firefly that were due. Uh, so I called out the Mondays here because I, I do want to make sure that everybody has the opportunity to review these uh, reports before they come to the TSC meeting. So um, yes, you are correct there. Um, the other thing that I thought about when I was looking at this is wondering if at some point we want to uh, think about what happens when we're not receiving a report um, within a certain time frame. Is that a point at which we uh, look to put a project into a dormant state or not? Um, that's obviously not a discussion we should have now, but it is something that's on my mind um, and something that you know maybe we should think through. Yes, Dano. I kind of agree, and I think the project should be one of the auto triggers for involuntary dormancy. So maybe we should discuss it next week so people can think about um, what it means to force a project into dormancy when it's not responding to things for project reports. Yeah. Okay, we will we'll add that to uh, the discussion items for next week. All right, any other uh, questions slash comments on the reports? All right, so uh, Bobby, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and I'm going to give you um, about 15 minutes just so we have enough time to get to the other two items to uh, do your presentation. Sounds great, thank you. Yeah. Let me share my screen. Figure out how to stop, there you go. Okay. So is everybody seeing my screen? Yep, we can see it. Awesome. So we were um, discussing the bridging the silos and trying to get uh, more communication flowing between the working groups and the special interest groups um, at the TSC calls. Um, and one of the ways that we decided that this could be accomplished was to have different groups come do a short presentation at our calls to let you know uh, what's happening in the community um, that might go under the radar of the technical steering committee. So today we are going, Nico and I are going to present a community project. Um, so it starts, it's the Giving Chain Project, which I'm sure everybody has heard about at least once, um, which is a social impact project and we're building it on Firefly. Um, I'm Bobby Mascara and Nico, and we're gonna be discussing this today for you. So what is the Giving Chain? It's actually a social impact blockchain based project to track donations, um, through a supply chain. So you have a mutable record of where the donation went and you can see exactly where it is along the way. Um, it is a high, it started through the Hyperledger communities and it actually touched at least six of them. So the first one was the social impact special interest group. Um, I was a member of that group and they had a speaker from the Microsoft social impact um, hackathon in DC in 17 and they gave us um, an outline on how to build a social impact project. Um, and they also um, gave us um, a lot of information on how blockchain can do that um, in the social impact group. Then um, I run the Princeton um, Hyperledger Meetup group and we have a lot of members, uh, over 300 in that group alone. And I run the other Princeton group with 2000 members. Um, and we got together in summer of 2019 and we decided to 
actually try to do those steps we picked up in the social impact special interest group to build a blockchain project for our summer meetups instead of meeting and discussing and having guest speakers and panels we decided to just like kind of do a lab or like a little hackathon ourselves uh, the learning materials working group which i am one of the co-chairs of decided to record this so if you go to the learning materials working group page under resources there's a tab that says meetup and if you ever wanted to do a social impact project the steps are there for you to follow and Sawtooth got involved in our first project, which you'll see, I'm going to go very quickly through the, the steps that we got there. In our first project, we used the Sawtooth example. So we were dealing with that community for a while as well. After our first proof of concept ended in the end of the summer of 2019, the project kind of went away. Um, also COVID came. Um, but after that, um, the Linux Foundation had the mentorship program, and I put up the giving chain as um, a submission, which got accepted, and we had a mentor assigned to us and two others that did not make the project um, join us anyway and did the same amount of work as the paid mentee, so it was a fabulous experience. Um, the trade finance group also got involved because my friend Andre from the trade finance group um, wanted to see how they could help with the shipping because once this project gears up, um, one of the issues we ran in, into in the second project was how to get items from the United States over to India um, in just one example. But as you'll see, the giving chain can do a lot of different examples. So shipping and transporting are going to be something we have to deal with down the line. And finally, the Firefly people came in in the second um, time we did the project with um, an unbelievable solution for us, which Nika will demonstrate at the end of this presentation. So very quickly, um, the business model, uh, the first project, we went from donors to volunteers to recipients. In the second project, two things changed. One, we have a model now where the NGO, when a crisis occurs, can um, query the system for help. Um, so that will alert uh, donors to start a project. And the second part now that um, when we did the project in 2021, there were three instances of the giving chain happening at the same time. So we needed a project manager for each project. So that's something that has to come along from the extern, like whoever wants to run a project, they need someone, a, a point of contact to do um, some of the registration pieces. So NGOs and project managers are, are oh, new for us. So the workflow, real quick, the donors gather food, we gathered farm fresh food, we collected it, and then we, you know, delivered it. And we used the sawtooth model, we forked it, we took out the fish and we put in a giving bag, we had um, this is the technical model. You'll see those little tags above all the um, transactions. Um, and those were actually barcodes that we printed and would three part barcodes, we would tear them off and, and scan them in to get the transfer um, registered into the system. Very, not very efficient, um, but it worked for our proof of concept, which we delivered all this wonderful food and helped our community at the end of the summer. Um, and this is basically um, the interface we used. Again, we had no consensus model. Once we turned the computer off, the, the instance of the blockchain went away, but it did prove our proof of concept that you can track something um, on a supply chain blockchain for charity. Um, and then the mentorship program got involved in, in 2021 um, and we did have a new um, life infused into the project. Um, so we decided to do, again, a three-part um, project at the same time. So we're trying to scale up um, and we're doing some shipping over to India um, and some projects over in India as well, because that's where the mentees were from. So we added Ukatahan, India, the flood victims. Um, that was my mentee Hardik's project um, because he lives in an area where that um, is affected by floods and he wanted to be able to set up that um, charity supply chain for people to help out when they wanted to. Um, also, Madhu was one of the volunteer mentees and she wanted to help the women in India. There's um, a humanitarian crisis over there for them. They're not receiving hygiene projects, pro products and she wanted to fix that. So the model validation was just basically the same. We collected goods, we transported them and we delivered them. But the only difference is in Madhu's model, the um, NGO requests the donation. Um, or 
kind of files a humanitarian crisis that needs some um, help. So that was basically the new business model and the new technical model. So instead of using Sawtooth to track it, um, that example isn't really um, up and running right now. They have a more complex example. And for the scope of the mentorship program, we didn't have much time to build. So we needed a quicker solution, something that would get us up and running. And again, you know, they're number one in my book, the five, five people came through, we'd request something and they would literally write it as we asked them to. Um, and Nico will get into that in a minute. So again, I just wanted to thank everybody at Hyperledger for this journey with this project. Um, as you see, it touched a lot of different communities and it has um, some wonderful impact that it could do. Um, and I encourage the people at Firefly and anyone on this call, if you ever need an example to use for um, explaining what blockchain does, this is a really good one, please use it. Um, and I will turn it over now to Nico. Thanks, Bobby, hey, I appreciate hey, Nico. it. One, one moment, um, just before we get to, to that, I have a question for Bobby. Um, the question that I have is, what sort of recommendations do you have for how you went about getting the different groups involved, right? Um, going back to that one slide where you have basically everybody that got involved in this across all the different projects and the working groups and the SIGs and all of that, right? I think was it was really telling, right? That the, it went through really a life cycle of, of getting people involved. So, so what kind of recommendations do you have for the community on how best to to work across all of these different groups and, and get the involvement that you ended up getting? Um, I think that the point for me where we actually changed, like we were trying to do this, you know, within the social impact group, within the um, learning materials group, you know, in the meetup group. Um, and I think when the mentorship project came, that changed everything because we had um, three new eyes looking at the project. That was when um, I got out of my comfort zone um, and actually went to the meetings for Sawtooth and uh, Firefly because I needed to get this done and, or we needed to get this done and we needed to see if these solutions would work. And that was, the, I guess, the, the, what, to, to what you're speaking of where we like jumped over the line there is when we actually like made the call, like, can we come to your meeting and talk about this because we have a you know, a project we're working on. And they were like, yes, everybody, Sawtooth was like, yes, yes, come. So it's actually just reaching out. I mean, everybody is welcoming. Thanks, Bobby. That cues up our uh, later topic really well. Um, Nico, sorry to have interrupted and jumped in there. Um, please feel free. No worries. All right. Thanks for that introduction, Bobby, and just for the, the background there. Yeah, it was, it was really great. Uh, collaborating with you and with the whole team building the Giving Chain demo here. And uh, I'm really excited to be able to show it off. So um, before I demo it, I, I don't get to take credit for anything that I'm about to show in terms of the, the, the actual demo that we're about to see. This is, this is all the mentees code. Um, they couldn't be here today. So uh, I, I picked up their code I, I tweaked a couple things to get it to work with the newest version of Firefly and, uh, and I'm, I'm just running it and I would love to walk you through what that looks like today. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and uh, you should be seeing my browser and should say uh, blockchain powering generosity. Can you see yep. that? Okay. Great. So uh, I have just started the, the giving chain app and also running on my machine is a Firefly network of four members. So uh, probably by now, most of you have seen the Firefly CLI, how you can stand up a Firefly stack locally and it, it runs all the different microservices that you need to run Firefly and it's really easy to get started. So uh, the Giving Chain demo uses four members and I'll get into in just a second what those members are. Um, and so, so I've just, I've started everything up and I, I haven't done anything yet. This is kind of the homepage. Uh, we can scroll down. It will tell you a little bit about each of the, the projects that they have going on right now. Um, and then I, there's one, because I, this is like a fresh setup, there's, there's one manual step that I need to do. So uh, I'm going to go create a token pool. So there's an admin interface for that. And I'm just going to hit this button here. And so what this is doing behind the scenes is I actually have the Firefly Explorer tab open here. And we're gonna be hopping back and forth between uh, seeing what's happening inside this app and seeing what's happening in Firefly. And so, so to me, one of the really exciting things about this demo and this project is it, it illustrates 
how quick and easy it is to build a really powerful application on top of Firefly. And uh, it, it makes me excited because it's, it's a realization of the vision of like, hey, if we create this REST API that's really easy for developers to use, they can unlock the power of blockchain really quickly. Uh, so, so that's, a, to me, the most exciting thing. So let's go take a, a peek at the Firefly UI. Uh, this has probably changed since the last time you've seen it. There's been a lot of updates to the UI. Um, we can we can reload this here. So we've got four members, and uh, there's a new tokens interface here. So we'll pop into there, and we see that when I clicked this button here to create a token pool, that created a new pool in the UI called donations. So there's nothing in here yet. We haven't minted any tokens, uh, but we'll, we'll start to see some things appear here as we're interacting with the Giving Chain app. So uh, out of the box, when you run Firefly locally with the Firefly CLI, it creates a, a an ERC eleven fifty five token connector, and this is it's sort of a um, it's a reference implementation of, of a token connector. We don't necessarily recommend that you take this particular token connector to production because um, tokens are the type of thing that just about every use case is probably going to have different rules that they need in place around how their tokens are going to work, how their smart contract works. And so we wanted to leave it open-ended and pluggable. So uh, in this case, uh, the giving chain right now is just using the, the, the reference implementation of ERC-1155, and they're going to be minting and transferring non-fungible tokens. So um, we talked about you know, earlier how each, uh, in sort of the first iteration of the giving chain, uh, each donation was tracked by a QR code that has linked to some data on chain. Uh, in, in this iteration, we're using NFTs. So each donation is going to be referenced by uh, or, or represented by an NFT on the chain, and it will have some data that points to what it is in the real world. And, and we'll, we'll take a look at that now. So, so basically, the, the way it'll work is we'll mention an uh, ERC-1155 NFT that will get transferred to uh, the various members of the network to represent the, the donation moving through the system. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, let's jump in and actually do some donations now. So I'm going to go back to the, the homepage. So uh, we've got four tabs across the top here, donor, driver, NGO, and recipient. So in the real world, in non-demo mode, uh, these would probably be four different Firefly systems running on four different servers with four different access models. But for the sake of the demo, they're all on one UI, so I can just click through and show you everything. But just wanted to throw that out there that normally uh, in, a, in a real production Firefly network, these would be isolated. So uh, we're going to sort of take on the role of the donor here, and we're going to create a donation. So I'm going to come here, and I'm going to hit Add Donation. I'm going to fill out this form as a, a, a Kaleido person, because that's that's who I am today. Um, I'm going to say, I'm going to donate some apples, and I'm going to choose a file. So here, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm taking a picture of my donation that I'm, I'm about to give. Uh, I happen to have a picture of a box of apples on my computer already, and I'm going to hit Submit. Um, so this this form will take a little bit. Unfortunately, we don't have a uh, like a little status spinner or anything, but it, it is actually uh, uploading that JPEG. It is minting an NFT, and this form will disappear, and it will show me the, the NFT here shortly when it's done. Um, I think there are maybe a couple other calls that happen in the background here uh, while this is going, which takes a little bit. Um, but we should start to see if we hop back over to the Firefly Explorer. Um, here we can see now there's a uh, now there's a token in this token pool, and it has been transferred. Uh, we can see this this transfer event. Um, this is this is the mint event, so it's basically just transferred to whatever address created it, which is the donor's address. Okay, so here we are. So there's there's a donation. Um, there's my little box of apples. I'm gonna go ahead and do one more. Um, you know, this one looks really similar, but we shouldn't really compare, you know, because it's apples and oranges here. So don't, don't, no, no comparisons between. All right, we'll give that a second. Uh, we'll go reload this. And okay, there's our, so now we can see we've got two NFTs. They're currently both owned by the same address, which we can see here. And this is the, the address of my donor on chain. All right. Just gonna poke this real quick. Okay, there we go. So there's there's my my apples and my oranges. So 
Now at this point, uh, we need to transfer this to the driver. And so, so right now the, the, the driver organization, the transport company has no, they have no NFTs. They, they are not in possession of anything. And just to, just to illustrate the other views, uh, same with the NGO and the recipient. So basically we're just gonna, uh, we're gonna transfer and we're gonna go from one to the other. So we'll hit transfer on the apples. We'll give these to the driver. So they've disappeared from the uh, donor's view. And just to, just to show that, we're gonna hop back over to the Firefly UI and we'll see now we have a transfer event and we can see it went from the donor address to a new address here. And this is the, this is the driver's address. So if we look in the giving chain UI, now in the driver view, we see, hey, there's this, my, my box of apples here. Um, again, the NGO has nothing. And then the, the donor just has the oranges. So let's let's hand that over, say we've delivered the apples to the NGO, we'll transfer that there, shows up on the NGO's view. And then finally, we'll transfer it to the recipient when somebody picks up those apples and there the recipient has received the apples. Uh, there's no more transfer button because we're done with the chain now. Uh, we'll hop back over to the Firefly UI, we'll take a look, and then there we can see all the transfers there that occurred. So uh, that's that's really it. There's a few other little features that Bobby described. You know, the NGO can request a donation and things like that. Um, I don't have time to, to demo every little nook and cranny of it, but uh, really excited to to have a uh, kind of a, a use case. As, as Bobby said, we. We were actually building all of this functionality in parallel with the Giving Chain project, and so so we had a lot of great conversations of like, hey, this is what we want to do with NFTs, and we were like, hey, that's that's great. Uh, this is how we're thinking about building an API that will allow you to do that, and uh, so great great collaboration between uh, the Firefly team and the Giving Chain mentorship program, and uh, it was just a, a fantastic experience all around. So thank you, Bobby, for, uh, for inviting me. Thank you for letting me do this demo. And uh, it was great to work with you and your team. Really appreciate it. No, thank you, Nico, seriously. So if anybody has any questions for us, please go ahead. I, I don't have a, a, actually a question, but it's more about uh, thanks for the demo and a, a person involved in, in, in similar project uh, we developed a platform on top of Hyperledger Fabric to, to, to basically run charity foundation a, a organization that they can come up and uh, basically ask or collect donations for, for different purposes for the social goods. And I think that it would be nice if we can uh, uh, collaborate and uh, see how we can bring these uh, uh, things together, because I think that there is a lot of things in common. And, uh, you know, I'm I really, I, I really glad to see that the, the, it's not only us who are trying to do that things, and the, you, you guys from Firefly also looking into that. So, yeah. You know. <clears throat> Look forward to working with you. I sent you my email in the chat. Yeah, I will, I will, I will follow up on that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Nico, I have one question. So with the Firefly, are we using any a DLT like Sartooth for Fabric or is a plain uh, Firefly only? Uh, sorry, was the question, was Firefly using Fabric here or, or does it have support for Fabric? I mean, uh, is a Firefly have a fabric here in this giving chain demo? I mean, ah, uh, yeah, great question. So in this particular demo, uh, the blockchain being used was Ethereum. Uh, Firefly does have support for fabric. Okay. Um, the current tokens connector, the reference implementation of the token connector that exists today, uh, depends on Ethereum tokens. It's it's the ERC eleven fifty five. We've talked about the possibility of implementing tokens on fabric. Um, it's a little bit more uncharted territory, but, um, and th there's also the possibility of using fabric as the primary transactional blockchain for uh, just, you know, Firefly broadcasts and definitions and, and all of that stuff and, and possibly using an Ethereum chain just for tokens. Uh, so, so there's a couple of different possibilities there if you want to get fabric involved. Um, but a lot of those need some some more exploration still. So okay, Nico, yeah. I'll, I'll just add to um, that. I I'm not a, I'm not sure if you're aware, but there is a fabric token SDK lab um, that exists um, that might be useful in just thinking about what's what's there for the future uh, with fabric. Yeah, definitely. Um, 
we we did stumble across that some time ago and uh, thought hmm, we should look at this and figure out if 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 and how we can use it in Firefly. Cool. Yeah, I know yeah. Um, Angelo. Yeah, Dave, go ahead. You, you yeah, I, I was going to say there there has been some confusion about the token SDK. So Fabric supports you know fungible tokens and non fungible tokens through chain code since version one So there is kind of that support that's already there. The token SDK brings additional privacy considerations like zero knowledge proofs uh, for token transfers. So you don't have to use the token SDK to do tokens in Fabric. Great, thanks Dave. Yeah, thanks. All right, I, I'm gonna move us forward. Uh, Bobby, Nico, thank you so much for um, providing the, the presentation and the demo. I think uh, definitely really good insight. And as I had mentioned, uh, when you answered that question, Bobby, I think really good um, setup for the, the discussion that we are going to have now around um, attending project meetings. So uh, Hart, I think, uh, I think I'm think i gonna hand it over to you. Um, I can definitely bring up the email if you want me to share that or um, how you'd like me to proceed, but uh, I think you're the you're the Hi, uh, inspiration yeah. for this. Sure, I added an issue late last night, um, and I put it in the the TSC. Uh, I linked to it in the meeting, actually. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, sorry for my usual yeah, no, that's good. my usual uh, late submission. Um, so I think this is this is something that is pretty simple, and I think we've probably already explained it a lot, and I think most people here have seen it. But the basic idea is we want to ask TSC members to attend one uh, either project or working group or SIG meeting a month for which they're unaffiliated and not a contributor, and then just write it down in some wiki. And this is mostly just so we can keep track of the overall coverage of who's going to what meetings and try to make sure some of the, the less common meetings are attended. Uh, the, the time commitment should be pretty small. Um, and as David Boswell suggested, we could also uh, let TSC members that wanted to report back during TSC meetings about interesting things they found uh, have some time at the TSC meeting, but this wouldn't be a requirement. Um, and I think this is pretty simple. And I think the only concrete, uh, the only concrete action of the proposal is to just create a wiki page uh, with all of this information on it. And I can do that at, at some point um, if this is approved. So um, I guess with that, I would just like to open it up to thoughts, questions. W what do people think about this? Uh, hey, Hart. Oh, oh sorry. Uh, do I need to raise my hand? Don't no, know go ahead, Jim. <laughs> okay. Thanks, we'll, we'll, we'll raise our hands after this, but uh, yeah, okay. you can go ahead. <laughs> yeah, it's on my phone. Sorry to see if others have done that. Um, uh, quick question, Hart. Um, uh, would there be uh, like strict uh, criteria on what's counted as non-affiliated? Uh, like I'm a you know code contributor to Firefly, obviously, uh, but I'm also uh, like in uh, pretty active discussions with the Cactus folks. Uh, would that be counted as uh, affiliated? So you know attending ca Cactus meetings wouldn't wouldn't count uh, into my uh, uh, monthly ration. It's up to you. Um, I don't think we want to strictly enforce uh, what affiliated or unaffiliated means or, or even define it rigorously. But the idea was you'd want to sort of rotate your meetings. Um, so th the intent was that you would not attend the same meeting every month. Um, right. I guess okay. maybe I need to add that to the proposal because I think yeah. I forgot to include it in here. Yeah, I think so that's a good it'd suggestion. Be, uh, yeah, it'd be uh, useful to clarify that to, to yeah. rotate every month. Absolutely. That makes sense. Thanks, Hart. No, thank you for the suggestion. Kamlesh? Yeah, so uh, Tracy, I agree with uh, Hart's proposal. And additionally, I think we should record uh, the what the obser observation particular uh, person have in the SIG or any kind of working meeting. Because uh, in the if I see my personal experience with joining some health, some 
a working group sig meeting so some even uh, some of the uh, sig chairs are running the meetings outside the agenda like for example take example of healthcare group in the health group healthcare group healthcare sig sometimes even agenda of the meeting is outside the healthcare group itself someone talking about the cryptocurrency someone talking about the non healthcare initiative in the blockchain so if we have some person to join such kind of meeting and even aids observations in the wiki where heart is creating so and some kind of monthly or quarterly review of those uh, uh, details good for the i believe okay peter just wanted to echo the plus one on the idea and report that I have been to one of the Bezu meetings and it was great. So I recommend to everyone that they also try this practice of being a TSC member who just goes around in the meetings and checks things out. Okay, so Peter, you were plus one in the proposal, um, not necessarily the report back uh, piece. Is that, did I get that right? Uh, well, I plus them both. Really. Okay. <laughs> All right, Kamla, you still have your hand up. I don't know if that's uh, came back yeah. or. Yeah, I'm loading now. Okay, loading. no worries. Any other thoughts on the, the proposal? Uh, anything that you'd like, anybody would like to add to this? So, to be clear, the reporting is voluntary. No one's required to report back to the TSC on this, but it was just a suggestion that if, if there was something, it, it could be brought up. Yeah, I think I think definitely, uh, to me, I see two sorts of things that are um, possibly interesting, right? In, in attending the meeting uh, as a TSC member, right? One is con making connections Right, and, and being able to form that that larger network of, you know, hey, this other project over here is doing something interesting, or this working group is doing something that maybe this project or this lab or or whatever might be able to um, lend a hand with, right? Uh, and, and then uh, secondly, if there's things that you know we could improve from a TSC perspective, right, of you know our processes or the way that we're doing things. Um, to me, those seem to be the 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 keys, uh, the the sorts of things that we want to think about. Um, you know, reporting back for um, making the connection with the other group. Yeah, that's that's exactly right, Tracy. Okay. Any other comments, thoughts, feedback on this as it's existing right now? Obviously, I know most of us haven't had a, an opportunity to read through uh, the proposal as Hart's written it here, um, but hopefully you did have a chance to read through the email chain. So if there's any other additions or thoughts people want to add, now is your time. Dave? Uh, yeah, I think it's a great idea. I think we could have maybe a uh, standing topic on the TSC for a while and to see how this is going. And maybe that's where we ask people to provide their uh, comebacks in terms of did you learn anything interesting that could be applied to other projects and things like that. Yeah, great idea, Dave. All right, anyone else? Is there anybody who doesn't think this is a good idea? Because I've heard a lot of, yes, this sounds like a great idea. Is there anybody who thinks, oh my gosh, adding one more meeting to my monthly calendar is going to be so painful that I'm not going to do it? Arun? Sure, so um, I guess adding additional meeting to our calendar is, is fine, but I'm also thinking through another possibility through these meetings and and that could be uh, the much needed uh, bridging with 
project teams and the TSC as well. I mean, if we are attending those calls, which we let's say do not associate ideally with, or maybe through our day to day activities, maybe that's a place where we get started and, and engaging in terms of giving them updates from the TSC calls or probably asking them for feedbacks on certain things that we work here that we are, let's say, making some um, hard calls, uh, assuming certain things about different projects. I see a lot of value in, in doing that. Yeah, I think making it a two way communication street, right? Uh, learning what they're doing as well as uh, helping them understand what's been happening in the TSC that might be impacting them or that they should be aware of is obviously a good thing. Nathan. Uh, I was just wanting to provide a bit of a testimonial. I tried to attend a meeting I didn't normally attend this last week and found a bunch of stale information on the Hyperledger calendar that was able to get fixed. So <laughs> as we do this, uh, it also helps us see a project like a new contributor would see it, um, but with the eye towards um, helping with our best practices and doing some simple things that make the overall Hyperledger experience a lot better. So uh, I'm hoping that, you know, as I poke around and try to attend some meetings that there's some things I can do to help. Yeah, definitely. Thanks, Nathan. Bobby. Um, I think that um, this is a great idea and I'm all for it. I, I uh, have a wiki page started like as an example on how to keep track of this stuff, which I'll send over to Hart in a second. But I think it's really important not just to um, have us go to this, the working groups and special interest groups and projects, but we need a way to communicate what happens in the TSC meetings to them on a regular basis. Um, I know like when the working groups decided not to do the, or the TSC decided the working groups didn't have to do the quarterly reports, there was never anything sent to the working groups to tell them that. If you weren't on the TSC call, you didn't know that. So I think that that um, needs to be a two-way, you know, maybe there's something that talking points the TSC can, you know, we need to make sure the community knows this to make sure that when we as TSC invade their calls, so to speak, that we have correct information to give them that they need. Yeah, definitely agree. Park? Hey, Bobby. Yeah, I'll comment on that, uh, that uh, in the ancient times, uh, the Hyperledger TSC calls were very packed and we would sometimes have 50 to 100 people uh, on the calls. Um, and the reason was my speculation was that it was because we typically talked about uh, things that more people would be interested in, like project architecture. Uh, we, we sort of had more technical discussions rather than sort of discussing discussing more like administrative issues. Um, and I think this is a you know, this is probably an orthogonal issue. Uh, but I definitely agree with you that it's worth considering sort of what can we do to to get more people interested in, you know, project-wide stuff like the the TSC meetings, uh, you know, the maintainers list, sort of all of this stuff. So thanks for bringing this up. No worries, great ideas. All right, so I think that the plan then um, is I'd like to give people the opportunity to review the proposal um, by themselves. With the opportunity to read and provide comments back on this particular issue um, in GitHub. And we will bring this up for a vote next week unless I see something major come up um, that would distract us from wanting to have a vote uh, next week and, and go back to more of discussion around it. So um, please take the opportunity uh, now that Hart's created the proposal to add any additional sorts of clarifications of how you'd like to see this um, work. Uh, so for example, Hart added this note, right, about the suggestion of rotating through different group meetings. But there's other sorts of things like that that you think would make this an even um, stronger proposal because I, based on what I'm hearing so far, um, feels like everybody's very much in favor of doing this. Um, you know, feel free to, to add to the proposal and we'll bring this up for a vote next week. Um, Bobby, you still have your hand up. Is that you have another comment or? No, I'll remove it. Okay, no worries. Uh, Arun? 
Yes. So I was trying to go go beyond and probably make use of this time that we are spending in different projects uh, to one more level. So I know we have a couple of task force going on right now. Um, one one of them is it to start on next Monday. Uh, I'm sorry, I missed the announcement section of the TSC call. Otherwise, I would have asked for us everyone to attend that call next Monday. Um, but yeah, th thinking through these engagements, it would be nice if we can um, utilize the same time in relaying some of these uh, discussions that we are having in task force or probably start creating a, a project specific maintainers mailing list that we had talk, spoken about a few weeks ago, um, specifically related to giving out information, uh, passing down the information, whatever happens in the TSC for off offline communications. Um, I think, yeah, that's all I wanted to say, sorry. Okay, no worries. Um, so great for the announcement for the task force, the security task force is kicking off next week. Um, related to the maintainers list, we do have a maintainers mailing list um, that we can be using uh, to make you know certain sorts of uh, announcements or uh, reach out to the maintainers from a mailing list perspective. Um, so that has already been created. And then it's just a question of what is it that we would like to, to communicate. Hart? Oh, I just wanted to say thanks everyone for your consideration and please feel free to, to comment and, you know, criticize what we have in the GitHub issues. All right, thanks everyone. I think the last thing that we have here is uh, this services for graduated projects slash incubation projects slash lab uh, draft that uh, David and Rai have created for us. Um, so David, I don't know if you want to, to cover this or you want Rai to cover this. Uh, well, yeah, I can say something and, uh, to start off and then Ryan can add, you know, any of his thoughts. But before I do that, just thank you to Hart for bringing up the suggestion about uh, uh, what we were just talking about. And thank you to everybody else in advance for your time and for your interest in this. I think as Nathan and Bobby have already shared, you know, when we go out and make more of those connections, probably, you know, all sorts of good things will probably come out of that. So thanks in advance for that. I'm excited to hear if people are interested. Um, and then as a segue, I mean, I think what this document is, is similar. It's it's kind of bringing a lens of how do we provide a little bit more support to the people in the community who are doing things. So, you know, it's been an observation that, you know, I've had where it's not entirely always clear to somebody running a project or a lab what sort of resources are available. So the goal of this document currently right now, it's just a draft document. On a Google Doc, but ultimately it would live somewhere much more public and accessible. You know, we'd find a place for it on the wiki. But the goal would be to provide clarity to those people running a project or a lab. You know, what are the things that they have access to? What are the things you know that they could you know leverage if they want? Um, so just documenting things that maybe people already know, but I suspect that maybe not everybody knows everything on the list. So. You know, this breaks things down into tiers. So we've got graduated project, incubated projects, and labs. Some of the things apply to all of them. Some of the things apply to some of them. And again, it's just a draft. So we could talk about what goes where or what should, you know, really apply at what level. And I realize we have a limited amount of time here. So I didn't necessarily think today would be the day to go into all the details, you know, but just to maybe I point out what the document is, give you some time to look at it. And then maybe if we want to spend more time on it next week, we can get into a little bit more of the details. But just to share um, that the document is there, it's open for comment and feedback. Please take a look. If you have suggestions, comments, edits, you know, certainly we can do, you know, make those edits, you know, add, make some changes. But the, again, just the goal would be how do we give people more clarity about what they can tap into because again there may be some things that would be useful for you that you didn't even know about right so that's that's the goal i don't know right do you have anything to add uh no not really that's that that's pretty much it and this uh i think a lot of the the confusion or the wording previously was uh influenced by when hyperledger used to pay for a lot more stuff so that's uh why it might have might seem a little bit fine-grained but uh if you have any questions about you know 
can Hyperledger support this or will Hyperledger support this? Uh, just ask, we'll figure it out. Just because it's not on the list doesn't mean there was a decision made not to put it there. Yeah, I think that's a, a really good point, Ray. I, I know that uh, Dano and I had a, a pre-read, uh, the opportunity to look at this prior to um, prior to this being shared with the, the greater TSC. And we definitely did find some things that were like, what about this? And how does this work? And, and that sort of thing. So um, recommend the, the TSC review this document, uh, ask questions, comment, make suggestions, and uh, you know, that, that will allow for David and Rai to, to make this an even, even better document uh, for um, people who will have questions about what it is that the, the staff is going to be able to provide them if their project is a graduated project or their project is an incubated project or um, they're in the labs area, right? So um, you go through here, uh, ask questions, comment, and we can definitely bring this back in the, in the agenda next week and uh, see where we're at with it, see if there's any other concerns that people want to bring, um, bring up on the TSC call. Dano. And another reason I wanted this list is to give projects more of a carrot to move up the list rather than a stick. Say, well, I want paid circle CI. It's like, great, um, get, get a proposal together in our incubation and we can do more fancy CI stuff for you. So that's the sort of motivation I have. And I was requesting some of these details is the carrot for what do we get at the next level. Yeah, I think that is a really good point, Dan. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but yeah, there didn't seem to be much differentiation between the, between the two levels of projects, at least as far as I could see in terms of, you know, why would a project go through that hoop? But yeah, I think this maybe clarifies that a little bit more. Mark? Yeah, I'll agree with both Danny, or sorry, Dano and uh, David strongly like we for the past like three or four years we have not had really any incentives for uh, projects in incubation to become active uh, and if we had some I think that would be a great thing and for those of you who haven't been around long enough active has become graduated um, <laughs> sorry Tracy <laughs> sorry about that <laughs> Well, I'm glad to hear. I'm glad to hear, Hart. That makes sense, and this maybe is where the details matter. So again, I, I realize we have limited time, but if people do want to look at the document and say, "Hey, this this really does make sense at the graduated level versus some other level," you know, the, we do want that level of feedback on the details. So please edit the document, mark it up, leave comments, whatever. We really want to make sure that this is kind of aligned to, you know, what the community is, you know, needing. So feedback certainly welcome. Hart. And I think where this gets complicated is dependencies. So like right now we have a situation where like Aries is a graduated project and they want to run like a thorough audit, but they use Ursa code, which is not graduated. And, you know, right now just doesn't have the community support to be graduated. Uh, so then, then what do we do? Um, but, but I don't, I think this can be a, a discussion for another time. Nathan? Well, and I think one of the points there is that we, our hands aren't tied. If it's in Hyperledger's best interest to provide a service because a lab is just really exciting and we, we ought to do a, you know, some marketing around it or because you know there's something that is a, a shared dependency and we're trying to encourage cross-project collaboration, I don't think it's invalid for us to say, well, let's make an exception to provide a resource because there's a, a real pressing need that you know we agree is something we, we should cover. Um, but I, I still think it's good to put together kind of a, here's what to expect and here's the incentive to try to move forward through the steps because um, it does provide a lot of motivation. If you know, you know if, I, if, if we start incubation, it'll unlock some things that we need or if we can get to graduated, then I get to do this, I get to, to participate with the security audit or we're gonna get this kind of regular release marketing. Yeah, I think some of those incentives can be very motivating for the companies that participate in those projects. And agree more. Um, anybody else have any final comments?
All right. So uh, two kind of action items, well, maybe three kind of action items. Uh, for those of you who haven't yet reviewed the uh, project reports, please take the opportunity and time to do that. Um, Secondly, please have a review of the proposal that Hart put together regarding attending the different meetings um, and provide any sort of comments or feedback on that. And then third action item out of this for the TSC is to review this particular document, provide any additional comments, feedback, thoughts on this. We will be, uh, again, um, hopefully bringing up for votes the proposal that Hart has given us and um, digging in and, and looking at this and providing any additional um, commentary next week on this particular item. So if there's nobody else who has any comments or questions at this point, I think we will close the meeting. All right, so we will see you all next week. Have a great week. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Tracy. Thanks, Jesse. Bye.